What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of GH, it was a hot mess. Um, chaos all over the place. People sick. People about to die. People about to get their memories wiped out. People racing against the clock to find said people that's trying to take people's memory. Crazy. A whole bunch of crazy. Um, first of all, Jason, I'm disappointed. I really am. For somebody as smart as Jason, a few things stuck out to me. One, when he was in the motel room with Shiloh and he knocked Shiloh out, why didn't he take back his gun? Why? Now Shiloh's in the warehouse waving around said gun that Jason forgot to take. The same gun that Jason always uses, the gun that Jason brought to the motel. Why didn't you take it back? Now he has a weapon. I understand that time was of the essence for Jason to find Sam and rescue her. So he couldn't look around for the flash drive. But when he knocked Shiloh out, not only did he not take the gun, he didn't call Drew. He didn't call the police. He did nothing. He just ran to go find Sam. You could have called the police. You could have called Drew. They could have came to the motel. Drew could have got his flash drive back. Chase could have locked Shiloh up for what he did to Sam. Kidnapping. Assault. Unlawful imprisonment. You name it, they can charge it. I'm just saying. Those were three new charges they could have laid on him. But yet, Jason's only concern was Sam, of course. Um, I it, it just, those things stuck out to me the most. I'm like, why didn't he do this? I mean, granted, it was all a plot point, of course. It was all for the point of the plot. Let me just point that out. But I just found it ludicrous. I'm like, Jason, why? Usually, Jason is a little bit more thorough than that. Usually. And he usually can think on his feet. So, you know, like in a quick situation, he usually can think and he just was not thinking in that moment. You didn't take the gun back. You didn't call anybody about Shiloh to come get the flash drive. You didn't look for it. You didn't, nothing. That scene with Cameron, Franco, Shiloh, Dr. Cabot, that scene was epic. I don't mean epic in a sense that it, it, it's a better scene than anything I've ever seen on this show. I mean, it was it was something amazing as far as acting. William Lipton has come a long way. I will say that because his acting on this episode of a frightened kid crying and, you know, the emotion that he showed. I have to give it up to him. Roger Howard, of course, was amazing. Roger Howard was amazing. That emotion that he conveyed where he was being brave, but he was also emotional because of Cameron and, you know, Elizabeth and stuff like and the kids. And of course, um, Ryan McLaughlin, Shiloh, um, he just played this villain who just had the gun at Franco. He didn't care. Like you see all these different emotions like Franco was brave. He was, you know, also emotional like Cameron was scared. He was emotional and Shiloh, you know, was just standing there with the gun, not caring. He did not care. Like Dr. Cabot was all nervous and, 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 you know, shook up a little bit. He's like, you know, I'm not doing this on no kid. Like he just kept telling Shiloh, I'm not doing no memory mapping on no child. And, I, you know, at least I will say about Dr. Cabot, at least he has some limitations to what he won't do. I mean, yeah, he's shady. He's a shyster. He's a crooked doctor. But at least he has a conscience. Shiloh, no conscience at all. He did not care. And that's what was crazy to me because they kept trying to talk some sense into him. They like, if you do this on a child, you run the risk of putting him in a vegetative state or killing him. And you're, you're going to walk. You're, all of this would have been for not. Basically, you would have did all of this for nothing. All of it. Kidnapping them, the whole nine. You would have did, you know, stealing the flash drive. All of that would have been for nothing. And you would have got caught anyway. And Shiloh's not thinking because even if you do 
get the information that you want, who's to say you're going to make it out of the country? Who's to say you're going to make it out of town? Because you're going to have everybody hunting you down. They're going to figure out what you're doing. They're already putting the pieces together now. They're going to hunt you. You might not even make it out of Port Charles. So, again, your plan is going to fall apart anyway. Um, but I will say this about Franco. You can say what you want about Franco. God knows I've had, I have over the years. Um, because everybody know I wasn't on board at first with him and Elizabeth. But I will say Franco has, that character has shown the most improvement as far as character growth over the years. Um, the, and I've always, I've, I've praised Franco for take you know stepping up and raise helping to raise three children that are not his i've praised him for that but what he did today was nothing short of amazing and shows the character growth that he's had over the years because he did something so selfless you know he didn't care what happened to him he stepped up to the plate to protect cameron i respect that and i i loved it and the emotion that they shown and I think even Cameron finally realized, I mean, him and Franco were on good terms, but I think after today, they, they became even better because Cameron, it showed Cameron how far Franco is willing to go to protect not only him, but his brothers, Elizabeth. It showed him that because he did something so selfless, like they were trying to implant those memories into Cameron and the whole time. Franco was trying to calm Cameron down, let Cameron know, like. Nothing's going to happen to you. And he stepped up to the plate in a major way and basically told Shiloh, leave him alone. Let him go. Put the memories in me. And he was letting him know, like, I did a lot of, you know, horrible things in my life. I had a bad childhood. All these things I would love to forget. So put the memories in me. Like he was basically trying to gold Shiloh into using him instead of Cameron. I respect it. And I also respect the fact that Cameron was like, no, let them do it to me. Forget it. You know, they were basically going tit for tat. Franco said, no, I'm going to do it. Cameron's like, no, I'm not letting you do it. Because he knew, Cameron knew what it would mean if Franco did this. That he would forget his life with the boys. He would forget his life with Liz. He would forget everything about his own life and he would be Drew. And he knew how that would hurt not only Jake and Aiden, but Elizabeth. Cam knew that. But Franco switched it up and gave his version of it. He was like, listen, I know what this means for me, but you have to understand what if they do this to you, you have to understand what this would do to your mother. You know what I'm saying? Because Cameron is the firstborn child. That's her eldest. She already thought that she lost Jake all those years ago. And you saw what that did to her. Imagine losing her son because she doesn't have to worry about her son turning into Drew. That's that's the least of her worries. That's the, that that would be the least of her problems. This thing would not work on Cameron because he's too young. His brain is not fully developed as an adult. He's not an adult, so his brain can't handle the trauma of a memory mapping. It would not be able to sustain that. So he would either be in a vegetative state or he would die. Do you not know what that would do to Elizabeth? That would kill her. Literally figuratively it could you know what i mean like her losing her eldest son in this manner you don't understand what that would do to her that would probably drive her into a nervous breakdown she wouldn't be able to live with herself because think of the guilt that she would have because look at her today she was under the impression that cameron was at some little teen wild party in the in the warehouse district that's what she thought so if something were to happen to her son do you imagine the guilt that she would have over that? Thinking that, oh, he out partying. But in reality, he was kidnapped and he was either, in a, you know, just losing himself, about to die. And she thought he was partying. That guilt would just eat at her. It would destroy her. That's why Franco stepped up and did what he did, because he wasn't about to let that happen. And plus, his love for Cameron wouldn't allow that to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if this, the, the memory mapping was a success on Cameron, Franco wasn't going to let that happen. Like he said, Cameron's a young boy. He got his whole life ahead of him. He's not about to either let him die or be in a vegetative state. Or if this thing does work, he's not about to let him be Drew Kane. He's not about to let that happen. So I respect the hell out of Franco for stepping up in that manner. Because that was an ultimate sacrifice. And I think by him doing it, 
It's just going to make Elizabeth love him even more than she already does. I know some people, I've seen some comments yesterday where people were saying that Elizabeth, when she was talking to Finn yesterday, she kind of alluded to the fact that her life with Franco was boring or whatever. I don't think she meant it in a way that people might think she insinuated it. I don't think so. And, you know, she could be, it, it has different meanings to it. Like she could, you know, because look at the life that she's had over the years with these men. They have been roller coasters. You know what I'm saying? Like up and down roller coasters. I wouldn't say her life with Franco has been boring by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, they've had some craziness happen, but it has been more mild compared to her previous relationships with the drama. The drama has been dialed back with the two of them. You know what I'm saying? So I think she's kind of liking the fact that her life is a little bit more settled than before. You know what I'm saying? It's all about interpretation. Some people interpret it differently. It depends. But it's obvious that she loves Franco and it's obvious he loves her. Look what he's doing. He's stepping up. You know, and that emotion that him and Cameron had was insane. Like Cameron was just sitting there like pleading, like just begging him not to do it. You know what I mean? And Franco knew it was the only way. It was the only way. Um, Shiloh, man. That after today, he's the type of villain that they need to. They, I don't think they should kill Shiloh off. I think they should just lock him up, put him on ice or something. You know, let him be in the wind for a while to you know, like Helena and all them, and Jerry Jackson and all them. You know how they cause trouble and they just disappear and then they come back and cause more trouble. That's the type of character that you need to do for Shiloh. You know that type of way. Because we need to start prepping for the next generation of villains. Because all these other ones ain't going to be around forever. So we need to start prepping. And I think Shiloh can definitely be a worthy uh, villain. I think he can be. Because today kind of solidified that. I mean, look at him. He has no scruples. I mean, the guy is willing to, you know, mess with a kid's mind. Like, he doesn't care. That's the type of villain that you want. Um, somebody who's no holds barred. You know what I mean? Like, look at Helena. The woman had her own daughter killed. Right in front of her, and she didn't even bat an eyelash when it happened. Come on now. You need villains like that. That's what makes the blood boil. That's what keep you on your feet. Villains like that, that don't care. Um, but that whole scene was just insane. And, of course, Drew and Curtis are trying to figure out where Dr. Cabot is. So, of course, they, you know, hack into his phone or whatever, get his phone records or whatever, or Shiloh's to see who been calling back and forth or whatever. Um, so it led them to Lucy Cup. This heifer was sitting here, got two shots with a lime. I'm like, she about to get tore up. Um, so luckily, it was kind of funny how Curtis and, and, and Drew came in there and they immediately saw her with the drinks and they moved the drinks towards their side. So that way she could have a clear mind because they need her at, at complete focus. And of course, you know, Dr. Cabot was using the alias because at first she said she never knew a Dr. Cabot. And of course, he was using the alias until Curtis showed her the picture and she recognized him. And of course, he was going by a different name. And she told him about the uh, place that she got him, you know, the, in the warehouse district on DeWitt Street. And once they got her the information, because you can see Drew was frustrated. Drew was like, every time she kept mumbling, talking about, oh, my commission was mad small and... Drew was looking at her like, focus, focus, focus. We're not here about your commission. We Time is of the essence right now. We need to know where he is. You know what I'm saying? Like, Drew was not having it. Drew was just looking at her like, come on now. And once they got the information, it was kind of funny when they gave her back her um, shots and stuff. She took both of them shots. She was like, <laughs> I was like, yo, Lucy bent. <laughs> Lucy is crazy, yo. She was feeling herself after she took two of them shots. And that line, she was feeling herself. I said, Lucy is a nut and a half. I'm going to tell you that right now. I love Lucy. She is crazy. Like, they already know when you're dealing with Lucy, you got to keep her on track and focus because she will go off the rails in two seconds. Like, her mind just moves. Like, I'll be like, and not just her mind, but that mouth. I'm like, Lucy, stay on course here. We need this. We need this info. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to keep her in focus. Because she'll lose her train of thought in a minute and start rambling and stuff. And they was like, nope, stay focused. Come on now. We need this information. It's, it's, it's timely. Um, But judging by the previews for tomorrow's episode, it looked like Drew and Curtis don't make it to the warehouse. It looked like they made a pit stop somewhere else. I'm like, y'all got the address. Y'all know where Cabot is. Why are y'all dragging y'all feet? Get there. 
now. Because this memory mapping, it should take hours to do. But knowing GH, they expect you to suspend disbelief and believe that it takes minutes. When really it should take hours because you're messing with somebody's brain and their memory. So that should take hours to do, not minutes. But you know them. That's how they do. Honestly, I did not care about Sam and Jason and any little lovey-dovey moments and stuff. I really could care less. Jason was acting like she was going to die or something if she kept getting out the bed. I'm like, she's fine. You know wrong with her. Um, Elizabeth, I totally understand where she was coming from, but I just hate the fact that Liz always thinks the worst of Cameron. Like, you know, he's in a sketchy part of town. It's at night, and her first thought is he better not be at no party. You really think that low of your son? That he's at some party? I mean, I understand that he done broke the rules before and stuff like that. I get it. But come on now. You need to do better. Like, stop thinking so horrible about him all the time. Like, stop. Like, she gonna feel bad when she find out the truth. Like, this whole time you think he over there acting butt wild getting into parties and stuff. When really he was kidnapped, chained to a fence. And almost had his brain fried. Like, he deserves some ice cream and cookies for dinner for that. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Because it just irritates me that they think so little of him. Like, you really think that about him? Like, he's just always going to be a screw-up or something? Like, damn. Leopards, well, leopards don't change their spots. I know that saying, but still. You know, some people do. <laughs> like, seriously, he's not the demon seed. He is a good kid. Um, And, of course, Liz is dragging her feet going there. She's sitting there telling, you know, asking Jason for help. Jason found out where he was, so she decided to call Detective Chase because Franco ain't picking up his phone either, obviously. I'm like, why are you wasting your time calling Detective Chase? You and Jason go over there and, and, and stop all of this. Like, why is everybody dragging their feet? Y'all know where y'all know where the action is. Why is y'all waiting? Get over there. Damn. What the hell y'all dragging y'all feet for? Get to it. People in trouble. And Sasha, she succumbing to this little virus that uh, Cassandra injected into her grapefruit in Puerto Rico. Um, Nina was annoying a little bit, but I understand why. Because as a quote-unquote parent, she thinks that her child is in trouble, so I get it. Um, but she need to calm down and let Lucas and Finn do their job. Like, calm down. All that screeching. Nobody want to hear all that. Oh, we're going to see my daughter. I want to see my daughter. What's going on with Sasha? Calm down. They doing their job. Relax. Damn, you act like the girl on her deathbed or something. Calm your nerves. Go get a cup of coffee or some liquor or something. Go do something. Go paint your nails or something. Go kiss Valentine. Go do something. Let them do their job. Um, I think Michael didn't bring up Cassandra. Well, even though he doesn't know her name is Cassandra. But he didn't bring her up because he probably thought it was a minor detail. But, I mean, they asked them, like, did you come in contact with certain people? Did you, what did you eat? What did y'all do in Puerto Rico? Like, because Michael wasn't showing no signs of these symptoms. So they wanted to know, like, what did y'all eat? And that's what, you know, Finn was so curious because he was like, so y'all ate the same foods and you're not feeling no symptoms at all? And I'm surprised Michael didn't think back to Cassandra, a.k.a. Sandy. Because she told you that she got a connection to Port Charles and y'all not only had drinks with her, but y'all had breakfast with her and she ordered y'all breakfast before y'all got there. Maybe Michael wasn't thinking at the time. Maybe it was slipping his mind because he was getting on my nerves. I'm like, Michael, think, 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 boy, think, think the woman that y'all were sitting with. You don't remember she ordered your breakfast for you. Don't you find that a little suspicious that y'all was sitting here eating breakfast that y'all didn't personally order for yourself? I'm just saying you got to think sometimes you got to use that noggin, but I understand because sometimes in certain situations you can't think clear. So I get it. It might come up later, though, because I'm like, we having too many near misses with all of this going on now. Y'all need to get with it, get to it. I don't blame Sasha because I'd be scared, too, if I'm laying on that bed all sweaty and sick and every part of my body aching. I'd be scared, too. I was like, well, am I about to go? I, I would be thinking that, too. If I'm sitting there and I'm all sweaty in a hospital bed and they don't know what's wrong with me, I'd be scared because I'd be like, am I about to go to glory? That would be my first thought. Am I about to meet Jesus? I'm about you, Hey, got to think. I mean, doctors don't know what's wrong with you. You sitting here feeling all in pain. I'm like, is this the end? <laughs> Like, for real, you might as well put me in hospice care. I'm like, is this the end? Like, y'all don't know. I hate when doctors say we don't know what's wrong. Don't tell me that. That's the worst thing you could tell me. 
if I go to a hospital and you tell me you don't know what's wrong with me, then we got a problem. <laughs> like, seriously, I'm getting out that bed and I'm going home. Because I ain't, nope, nope, I can't do all that. Y'all supposed to know. Y'all went to medical school for 10 years. Y'all supposed to know what's wrong with me. Like, I'm just saying, you better get with it. So for right now, until they figure out what's wrong with her, they got to put her in isolation, basically, because they don't know if it's, if, if it's um, contagious or not. You know, so Finn was letting everybody know, like, you know, if you start even coughing or feeling like your throat is scratchy or you getting flu-like symptoms, call me immediately. Because until they know what they're dealing with, I agree with them. Like, you just got to put her in isolation until y'all know, because this is not a virus that they're familiar with. And who knows what the hell Cassandra injected her with? You know what I'm saying? It could have been anything. Like, you just never know. But um, anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. I will see y'all all later. Peace.